Hi, I'm Rob Vanstone. I'm here with fellow Fashion Plate and Leader <laughs> Post colleague Murray McCormick. We're discussing what there is to discuss about the Rough Riders' 15 to 9 loss to the Calgary Stampeders. Pretty boring game, but I think the Rough Riders took some steps forward in showing that they can participate in a toe to toe battle with the Calgary Stampeders and end up coming out looking pretty credible in the process despite the lack of two points. Can we use moral victory? It's not two points, yeah. but it's a moral victory. Like There's some solace in, yeah. in the way they played. I thought, I, I didn't know what to think. I thought if the Riders played up to the level they had before this game, they could give Calgary a good run and possibly beat them. And then the same, if Calgary plays up to the level it could, it could stomp them. So they kind of, Calgary, Calgary didn't have a lot of finish today. They didn't seem to have their, their offense working the way, mind you, they got five field goals, which was enough to beat them. Because you think if you hold a team to 15 points, you should win, especially the way that offense is going. So... I'm kind of mixed. As I say, a moral victory, we hate them. But considering where they were the last one they played the Stampeders, they've made huge strides. Defensively, and anyway. The offense, the was, offense was, was pretty awful. awful yeah. uh, Brandon Bridge gave them some life at the end. Kevin Glenn didn't have a chance to give them any no. life. Uh, there was no running game. Receivers weren't getting open. It didn't help that, uh, that uh, well, if they were getting open, there wasn't time to throw. Yeah. Uh, Naaman Roosevelt being injured and taken out of the game, that was a factor. There just wasn't much there. What does Calgary's D-line have against the Riders' offensive line? They just, Mika Johnson, Charleston Hughes, but, and that guy, DeGre Davis, I think his name is? They Sorry. just mauled them. Just, yeah, it was just, and the thing is, offensively, Dan Clark comes back this week off the injury list, and what do you do now off of that performance? Because the line has been pretty good in his absence. Do they make a change? Or do they keep the way things are? But give it to Calgary's defense. That They won it in the trenches, and it just permeated through the whole offense, and Kevin Glenn is not a guy that's going to run on the throw on the run and find all sorts of openings. He's going to get in the pocket. He's going to make the passes. And he had a bad game. I think I, I don't think his hand was an issue. I think he just had one of those games that. Did he have a chance to have a good I game? I don't think he did. How often was there time? Yeah. Uh, just that game was not conducive to the way Kevin Glenn uh, needs right. to run an offense. It just they were on top of him. Anytime they tried to run. Brandon Bridge led the Rough Riders in rushing yards with yeah, no. 12. Ke Keenan LaFrance had four yards on four carries. How about Jerome There just Messam. wasn't anything there, and Jerome Messam just ran through it them. Was and, like, and even the two-yard runs, or the ones that I was watching from the press box, they looked like the ones that hurt the most. Like, Henoch Mwamba was got to be hurting. I think he had eight defensive tackles and probably 80 contacts on Jerome Messam. But Messam is a beast. And they think some guys come up and they do well, like Wiley with the Argos. Messam still, I think Messam is the measuring point of where a running back needs to be from blocking power, dominating game, and he dominated a game for the Tigers, the Stampeders tonight. I think both both lines, the Calgary Stampeders, <laughs> were the superior team, and Convictions. as a result, they were superior by a 15 to 9 count. For Murray McCormick, who's superior to me in terms of wardrobe, I'm Rob Danstone. Thanks so much for your time today.